Hello, my name is Nicholas Santillo, and this video is the introduction to DHIS2 data validation. This is an overview of the DHIS2 curriculum we've been developing at Logical Outcomes. It's based on the DHIS2 Academy workshops you can see listed on the left-hand side of your screen. In this video, we're going to be looking at maintaining data quality, or data validation. The required readings for this unit are chapter 11 and 12 from the user manual and chapter 13 and 16 from the implementation guide. So the four C's of good data quality. Uh, all good data should be correct, complete, consistent, and current. Uh, there's a lot of ways that DHIS2 can assist in achieving all these four C's. and what we're going to be talking about is how the data validation uh, systems in DHIS2 can help with that. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at correct and consistent. Uh, there are um, other ways to look at complete, and you can look that up on the user manual for now, and that has to do with uh, reminders and, and, and that sort of stuff. But for this video, we're actually going to be looking at the data validation rules to make sure that data is correct, and also minimum and maximum and outliers to make sure that it's consistent. So how to check for uh, data quality. So uh, the software, as we said, can assist with a uh, regular setting of minimum and maximum ranges, and we'll look at that at the end of this video. Uh, missing records, outlier analysis, uh, displaying records with checkbox text, and applying validation rules. And we'll also be looking at how to apply validation rules um, at the end of this video. So let's look at the specific uh, validation rules we're going to be looking at within DHIS2. So the absolute validation rules are based on comparisons that must pass um, the arithmetic logic. So these are very much equals to, not equals to, greater or less than, or greater than or equals, or less than or equals. Uh, there's also the compulsory pair, which is a very specific um, relationship. It's, it's similar to equals, but more specific uh, than equals in that um, they must always be together and they must always be the same. So the statistical validation rules, these are based on statistics of captured data and specifically minimum, maximum, what's within that range, what's an outlier. Um, but it's much easier to explain when I look at it in the system. So we're just going to do that next. And after that little walkthrough, there's going to be a short quiz, uh, which looks at validation uh, equations and, and what is uh, a proper validation equation or, or not. So uh, you can uh, check that out after our little walkthrough. Okay, so here is our screen of DHIS2. I've signed into our training database here at Logical Outcomes, and we're gonna go through just a little bit of um, the data validation, so what that looks like in the system. So I'll go to apps, and uh, I can search through apps, or I can just type in quality, and uh, this is the data quality app that'll pop up. So I will just click on that. This is all live, so you'll have to excuse any uh, slow loading time that DHIS2 is giving me, which it seems like it is. Uh, cool, so we've popped into our data quality area and you can see we have uh, validation rules and we have data analysis. So um, the validation rules where we're gonna create the, the, uh, the validation rule and maybe pop them into groups if we'd like, that's similar to any other group in DHIS2, so I'm not gonna go over that part. Um, and then the standard deviator outlier and the minimum maximum outlier, that has to do with um, the data elements, uh, anything that we've created within the data elements. So first I'll look at the, the validation and then I'll um, go look at how to create these minimum and maximum and uh, then we'll know that we can come back here to find the outliers. So let's go into uh, our validation rules and we should be able to uh, see some that have already been created and pre-populated within the training land instance that uh, exists when we create training land. Uh, but I believe we have also, uh, there we go, we've also created one um, based on an earlier uh, assignment that I did for our curriculum here. So uh, this is one that I've already created, so I'm going to come in and edit it and just look at what this means when we are editing our validation rules. It makes a bit more sense when we're in there. 
Now, once again, you'll have to excuse the slow loading times. So here we have the name. Uh, of course, the name can be anything you want. This is quite long, but uh, if you can think of an easier or s short name other than the, the actual uh, formula itself, go for it. Um, but at the moment, because it's a test, we're just kind of duplicating everything. Um, the instructions, this, this is what happens if the rules violate it, it'll tell uh, someone what they need to do, uh, what's, what's going on. And uh, the description is uh, a description of, of pops up uh, with what is the validation rule. So uh, let's go through these levels. With importance, uh, low, medium, and high, with a low importance, we can actually uh, do a lot and it'll just flag it. Um, it'll still save the data. It's not going to be a big deal. Medium, um, similarly, uh, it's not a huge deal. High, though, uh, will prevent you from actually saving data when entering it if it breaks um, this validation rule. And you can read more about the specifics in the uh, user manual. Uh, the rule type um, has to do with validation or, uh, because I've already saved this, I actually uh, can't uh, change this. But this is validation or um, our other type will be the tracker version of a rule which would exist within programs um, on that side. Validation exists within the aggregate side. And then the period type has to do with the data elements that we're working with and these ones are monthly. So the operators, uh, we've looked at them a little bit earlier but that's equals, not equals to, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, and a compulsory pair. Uh, here we're looking at greater than or equals to, and I'm going to edit the left side of the equation uh, to see what that means. So um, this is very similar to uh, what indicators will look like. It's a very similar screen when creating an indicator. Um, we have our expression, a description of what the expression is, uh, and we can choose to skip if any value is missing, uh, skip if all values are missing. That's if we have multiple, because uh, in this case we have two, you can see here in the description, Food poisoning case is male plus food poisoning case is female, or we can never skip. So um, this is very important. The default is skip if any value is missing. Um, sometimes you want to make sure uh, you never skip, but depends uh, what you're uh, validating. Um, and of course, you want to be able to find your data elements here. You can filter them uh, based on a search. Um, if I do NKS, for example, uh, I can filter all of the data elements I've created with my initials um, so I know that they are part of my test. And as you can see, the data elements uh, that are broken down with categories already have the breakdowns um, for me, so it's nice and easy. Uh, so this is cases, male plus cases female equals uh, what we are considering total cases. Um, and then we're saying that's greater than or equal to our right side, and our right side is deaths male plus deaths female. So we're saying the cases must always be equal to or greater the deaths, which makes sense because if you had more deaths than cases, uh, something is probably wrong in the data input. Um, so just an example of how it looks like to build our data validation. It's extremely powerful as you can see. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll just pop over into our data entry screen. Oh, I've uh, already clicked save so it's just gonna take a moment for me to go through but I'll explain what I'm gonna do next um, I'm gonna pop over to data entry screen and then try to enter data incorrectly to show you what that looks like and I'll also show you how to set a minimum and maximum value for your data so uh, in the apps um, we'll go over to our data entry screen and uh, we have nice long load times to spend with each other while we are uh, waiting for this because um, it seems like I am in a slow internet spot right now. Uh, but I'm going to go uh, from here. I need to choose my org unit. And uh, the org unit that I am choosing is Manitoba. Um, I'm just the data set that I've set here. And go to my previous year. I've already entered some data. Cool. So uh, it looks like we already have something wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double left click. And that'll bring this window up. And this is a great window. This is where I can save my minimum and my maximum. So why was it um, red? It was because it was over the maximum, which was 50 there. Uh, I can choose to flag it or leave a comment if I want. Please look at this. Um, not sure why. 
uh, it's above average, you could say, uh, if you're the data entry person. And save that, and green will let you know that it's saved. Uh, this was originally stored by admin admin, so you can know who stored that. Um, if you have access, you can save or remove this. Um, and so, for example, I could say, well, this is actually fine. It's within the min max. Uh, and then we're set there. We can see um, here data element history. Or I could say, you know what? No, I'm not going to change it. Um, and we'll, we can then see that the max is here, although this is an outlier. And we would also be able to look at that if we go back to that data quality app and look for outliers. So um, I've saved it, I'm going to close it, but uh, so it is um, large right now. But what we can do is we can see what it looks like when we go over that validation rule. So I'm just going to enter uh, 6000 here and then run validation. And oh, we have a validation result, which is uh, there's an error. So the validation rule uh, that the cases has to be greater than or equal the deaths, there's a problem. Um, and we also have um, something considered an outlier. So we have two things wrong here, which is great. When we're fiddling in the data, we know exactly there's a problem. And uh, what's great also is that it tells us immediately what's the issue, is that the left side is much less uh, than the right side when it has to be more than or equal. And it gives us that actual sum right away. Um, now you can, uh, you can read into the user manual about how to express this in more specific ways. I believe there are ways to actually express this um, so it doesn't sum up the entire data set in uh, right here so that you can actually isolate the problem if you have a very, very large data set. But I'm not exactly sure how to do that offhand. So um, you have to wait to a later version of this video or uh, look it up in the user manual. Um, but that's just a great example of uh, how data validation works. Um, it's very strong. So what I didn't do is I didn't hit enter there and then I should be able to run. Okay, so it seems like I'm still having a problem, so I'm going to um, have to just go back and now if I do complete, I'm still having a problem. So it's not saving my new entry, uh, oh, but that's because I'm looking at the wrong, um, there we go. So uh, now I'm only having outliers, um, but I don't have my validation rule broken. I was actually looking at food poisoning, as I'm sure some of you noticed while I was cooking away. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, what's next is going to be a short uh, little quiz about the um, indicate uh, about data validation uh, formulas and whether or not you'll be you'll be checking whether or not they are correct or incorrect. And uh, thank you so much for watching. That's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Nicholas Santillo again, and uh, from Logical Outcomes, I hope you enjoyed this video.